Hello everyone, my name is Tepo and welcome back to Nintendo Engineering. Today we are doing Applied Thermodynamics, which is the steam plant, power machines M6. The main purpose of a steam plant is to produce electricity. And we use the combination of a generator and a turbine to generate electricity where the turbine is the one that will convert the heat energy from the superheated steam that we will be using superheated steam to the rotary motion that we need to spin the shaft of the generator so that we are able to produce electricity at the other end we have an evaporator which is where we are producing the steam the fuel that we are using is coal we call this an evaporator to there in the evaporator because this process must be continuously carried out there will always be water water will always be continuously turning to steam here so the steam that is produced in the evaporator because there will always be water in the evaporator will always be wet steam but here we are looking for superheated steam then we introduce an instrument called the superheater A superheater will add energy, heat energy to the wet steam and convert it to superheated steam. Now, we have a pump, which is a feed pump. As the water that is in the evaporator is converted to steam, we need to keep on adding water into the evaporator because we want this process to be carried out continuously as the water that is in the evaporator is converted to steam and it leaves we need to be adding water to the evaporator so that it can also be converted to steam and taken to the turbines we call this feed water or that's the feed pump feed pump and between the evaporator and the feed pump we have an economizer an economizer is used to raise the temperature of the water from what it is as it is coming from the storage we call the storage hot well The pump is pumping the water. Let's say this is a dam. The feed pump is pumping the water from a dam. Let's say the water is at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the water will be pumped from the hot way and then it will be passed to the economizer. The economizer will raise the, the temperature of the water so that it becomes easier for us to evaporate the water when we reach the, the evaporator. So, we know heat energy of steam is represented by H, which is enthalpy. The heat energy of steam or the heat energy of water is represented by H, which is enthalpy. The enthalpy of water before the economizer, that is H1. The enthalpy of this, the water after the economizer, that is H2. The enthalpy of the wet steam, which is the enthalpy of water, after the evaporator, it's H2. And the enthalpy of the steam after the superheater, it's H. No, it's H1, 2, 3, 4. H1 is equal to HF, which is the sensible heat at temperature number 1, which will be the temperature 
of the water before the economizer. T2 it equals to HF at temperature number 2, which is the temperature of the water after the economizer. And then H3 it equals to H wet, which is equals to HF plus the dry destruction HFG if I'm not mistaken yes and then H4 it's equals to H4 it's equals to H soup which it's equals to HG plus the specific capacity of the superheated steam in brackets T soup which is the temperature of the superheated steam minus the saturation temperature and this will be at a certain a certain pressure the hg and h soup you are going to get from our steam table you will be given a certain pressure you will be given a certain pressure you take that pressure you go to the steam table look for that pressure and in the corresponding row, you will take the value of G, FHG and the, the saturation temperature, which is ST. Even here, you would use a pressure to get the value of HG and HFG. Here, you will be given the temperature. You take the temperature and you go to the steam table, you look for that temperature. In that row, you will extract the value of F of HG of HF sorry and even here you would use the temperature to get the value of HF from the steam table now we know that we need for combustion to take place we need air so we are going to drive in air into the combustion chamber that air we will first pa pass it into a he air heater. And this we do it to improve the process in the combustion chamber. Sort of like what we're doing in the economizer. This is air in. And then there is heat that is escaping from uh, the combustion chamber. And we are trying by all means to use every bit of heat that is produced by the coal. That is why we are going to connect a line where the gas, the fuel gases that are coming from the, 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 the combustion chamber will pass because the fuel gases are leaving the, fuel, the, the combustion chamber with a great amount of heat. Therefore, we are going to create a line for the fuel gases to, to, to follow. That line will pass in the superheater first. And then it will go to, after the superheater, it will go to the economizer. The economizer. And after the economizer, let me write this. Uh, okay. After the economizer, it will go to the air heater so the fuel gases will leave the combustion chamber into the superheater where it will leave some of its heat the fuel gases will help in converting the wet steam to superheated steam by leaving some of the heat energy that it came with from the combustion chamber after the superheater the line where the fuel gases are fo which the follow the, the fuel gases are following will pass into the economizer remember in the economizer we have water that is being pumped from the hot way to the evaporator the water will absorb the heat energy that the fuel gases have the fuel energy that is left because the superheater 
took some of the fuel uh, of the heat energy from the fuel gases and then it goes to the economizer the economizer the, few, the, the heat energy that is in the fuel gases will be used to raise the temperature of the water. And then after that, the line that the fuel gases are following will pass through the air heater. And the energy, the heat energy that is still remaining in the fuel gases will be used to raise the temperature of the air. And then from there, it goes to the chimney. Remember, we have a hot wave, which, which is a dam where we are storing the water. The feed pump will pump the water from the dam or from the hot well into the economizer, which will raise its temperature from T1 to T2 or from H1 to H2. And then the water from the economizer will enter the evaporator where it will be converted into wet steam. And then from there, it will pass, in, it will pass into the superheater, which will convert the wet steam into superheated steam and it is used in the economizer from here sorry it is used in the turbine to rotate the generator so that we are producing electricity at the end of the day after the turbine we have what we call a condenser which will turn the steam back to condensate that is water and then from there it goes back to the hot wave but this we don't look at it that much this is what we want to focus in. So the same water it's used over and over. As you can see from this, the from the turbines, it's converted back to water using the condens the condens the condenser back to the dam, where it is pumped back to the economizer to the evaporator, and it goes. It takes place in cycles, and that is what we need to start with our steam plant. I will see you on the next lesson.